So if you have ever tried to send an HTTP request from a local application that you're working on on a browser like Chrome, and you got stumbled upon this really awful weird error that says something like has been blocked by course policy, blah, 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 whatever you can you can imagine in here, if you jump into the network, you're going to find a course error, you're going to find pre -flight. what are those things and why this is so annoying and why this is happening to you every single time you're trying to do a request and you get this awful response and you can't get your head over it. So in this video, I'm going to show you what is course in details, as well as I'm going to give you the reasons and why I enjoy and absolutely love to work with course and how you can enjoy it too. So why I love course. So if I take you through my, my journey in here, how I enjoy course and why I love course, first, we need to go ahead and take a look quickly on what is course, how it works, and why you should enjoy it too. So in this particular Figma jam in here, or for this particular diagram, we got like a pretty simple diagram of how course works and with like HTTP headers, HTTP requests, post requests, and all of that. So course in the first place, before we jump into this, it's actually pretty simple. It stands for cross origin resource sharing. And what does that mean is basically when a when a particular domain name, and that's called origin in the terms of JavaScript. So a domain name in here or an origin called bees.com that is a website only shows bees. And that particular website when it tries to send an HTTP request and access another resource, which is called ons.com. And this website in here or server or whatever, of course, as we all know, server can live in IP addresses, or they can even domain names. And this is what the domain name is. And this is also called an origin. So the origin of this particular server called ons.com. And when bees.com tries to access ons.com, it basically is actually activating course, or is going to be stumbling upon the course protocol provided by the browser itself. So that's simply what course is. And this is actually one course happening. So when bees.com tries to do like a request to the backend API of bees.com as well, that is not course that's course is not going to be like pre flighted or is not going to be going through. And it's not going to be like, you know, just like prevent that request, because that's the same origin. But when it happens with course origin, that's when course is activated. So let's go and try to take this quick example. So let's imagine this is actually an user tries to send an HTTP request, the user is actually in bees.com. This is actually the browser. Uh, you can imagine this browser is just like for viewing different information about bees and how they colonize and, and also the sort of crazy stuff about bees. So let's try this website. So he's Sends, he tries to send an HTTP request. And that first HTTP request is going to be going to bees.com itself. So bees.com is going to send this request. Uh, it's, it's only going to send a single request because it's actually the same origin. So there will be no course on the way. So as you see, no course request is going to be passed successfully because it's technically just sending it to the back end of, of its own same domain name. Uh, maybe it's, for example, sending an HTTP post in here, and it's going to be like having, you know, regular stuff, the response is going to come back, the user is going to enjoy the user is going to view bees, that is it. Now let's come up to the most interesting scenario where actually the user tries to send a request. But let's try, let's say, or oh, for example, bees.com, this particular website tries to hit a completely different origin or a completely different domain. So bees.com in here is going to send a request. And it's going to be of course, HTTP request. So when it tries to send a request in here, and when it actually the browser detects that, oh, the actual current website bees.com is trying to access a completely different origin, which is ons.com. So now the browser tries to enable course. Now of course, in here, what it does first is sends a pre flight check, the pre flight check is actually an HTTP request. And it's going to send an options HTTP request, it basically just it, it does that basically just to go ahead and tell Oh, if the browser or the target server ants.com is going to allow that request to pass or not. And of course, secondly, it's going to send the actual request that the user intends to say. So the pre flight check is actually the first options request is going to be sent in here. So let's say this is actually the options or this is the pre flight It sends this like red line in here, uh, the browser is going to pre flight, you know, it's going to be sent by a browser, it's an options request to check if course is allowed. And it's simply HTTP options. Now, once the actual server receives that it knows, oh, the browser is trying to ask me about course, how can I respond, right? So the actual server in here needs to respond in a low course, if the server doesn't allow course, if the server deny course, 
the actual request in here won't be made and you will have like an error on the browser say oh pre flight check failed or denied you cannot access a cross origin domain name in here and you cannot do this particular request so the server particularly has to return the actual exact headers and those headers if we take a look on those as actually the server needs to respond with like a response to the options request with headers like access control allow origin like you give it uh, this is actually the header name and the, the value of the header and it needs to be the actual origin that can access that particular resource or server, for example, you can access bees, or you can give it for example, a star that means any origin can access that. Uh, for example, there's headers, so you can allow particular headers and block others. Otherwise, if you want all the headers, you can just have a star and the same things for the HTTP methods, you can block or actually allow and or deny different HTTP methods, like you can only allow post and gets or maybe you can allow everything with a star pretty simple. So once the server actually responds to the bees.com pre flight check, the options pre options pre flight check, once that actually happens, the bees knows, Oh, course now is allowed for me by the remote server, I can send my second actual request, which is in blue in here. So if you follow that so HTTP request is going to pass through normally course check. So if request passes successfully, if the server allows bees.com by returning a header, and that's what it did in here, that's going to pass through normally, that's going to allow a response to come through. So everyone is going to be happy in this particular scenario. So to see that in a real world scenario in here, for example, we got this login form in here that is going to actually hit a server to basically just log in and authenticate. So this, the actual login or the domain name or the origin name for the current application that is you know doing the login, which is the front end application is going to be localhost in 3000. Now the server you're trying to hit is actually living inside localhost 8000. So this is actually trying to do a cross origin because they both live and exist in completely different origins. So this will be hit and stumbled upon course protocol. So for that to actually try to avoid course protocol, we need to properly configure the server. Now right now the server is not properly configured. So if we try to do a request real quick in here, so we do login, as you see, we're going to get a course error. So it's going to do a pre flight first, then it's going to do a course error. So there's two requests that before the first one is going to be the pre flight. And the pre flight screws in it, it's not failing because it's actually returning 200. And that is all good because the pre flight passed. But the problem that the P flight passed, but it didn't actually allow course is because the actual headers are not inside of the response headers, or the right headers to allow course. So for example, if you take a look on like access control allow origin, there it doesn't exist, right? So it doesn't exist inside of like the response headers from the server. So that's why the course is not being allowed. And it's not being like passing through. And of course, the request headers are being like access control request headers and request method. And most importantly, the origin in here, which is a completely different origin from the one we're trying to hit, which is localhost 8000 here. So that's basically why this is being stumbling upon and why this is being blocked. Now, if you take a look on this one, the second one is basically just like, you know, it's not going to pass anyway, because course is not going to allow it and the browser is not going to allow it to pass through. So this is actually the pre flight, the first request is made pre flight. And the second one is course. And also what I like about Chrome in here is it gives you this really small icon that you can click, and it tells you which request this particular pre flight belongs to, which is pretty awesome. Now, if you jump to see the actual code that is running in the front end, not the server, this is just like the react application, which is running the front end and putting the login form. So it's trying to hit localhost 8000, which is the actual server you want to own origin, and just trying to log in with sending, you know, the authentication and everything. That's what it is. So we are using Axios in here, but you can use fetch or XML HTTP request, which is basically the same thing. And the browser is going to handle all of those using course and, and that basically it for the front end. So you can't do anything for the front end, the server has to be configure it properly and has to include the right headers returned on the response in order to allow course. So if your server is running on Node.js and Express, you can use this really awesome NPM package called course. And this will just take all the heavy fit lifting for you. It's just going to like give you no headache, absolutely just going to simplify the whole course process for you. So all you got to do is just go ahead and install this and use it and just basically use it as a middleware. And that is it, you can configure this with the small parameters. And that is it is going to be it for it. Of course, there are different other packages for like other different languages like PHP, maybe Laravel, uh, maybe you're using like uh, .NET, I don't know, everything is actually possible, or you can implement it the hard way, which is using the actual headers, which is not really hard. It's just like you need to know what you're doing, which is 
pretty simple as well. Now, if we jump to our server, I'm using Expression here, and this is actually our server code. Now, the server in here is going to have course. So I already installed that package called course. So I'm just going to import this course, and I'm going to go down in here, and I'm going to try to use course. So I'm going to uncomment this code is have use, which is I'm telling it, oh, please go ahead and use this particular middleware, which is the course middleware. Now here, you can configure this however you want. For example, allowed headers, you can give it a star, you can give it the particular headers that you want to allow, uh, as well as for the allowed methods and the particular origin. So for the particular origin here, you can you can specify only bees.com, which is can work as well. But for development, and when you're trying to do this, like local host and everything, you always want to like put this as like a star because it's going to make your simplify your life a lot. And you're not going to have any problems. But always, always try to remember when you try to deploy this to production, always change the origin in here, the headers and the methods to the appropriate origins and the appropriate values or for it to work properly. Otherwise, you're going to have a huge security risk on your actual API and server because this will just like have a lot of CSRF and XSS and the whole vulnerability is going to be exposing to now if you try to do this again, after enabling course, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of both of these requests, I'm going to do login. And there you go, it passed successfully got authenticated successfully. And if you take a look on the actual requests, it actually works. The first options one is actually working because those are the hitters that exist, which is access control, allow hitters and methods and origin, they exist in the response for the pre flight check, of course, because this is the pre flight. And the second one is the actual request which sends the data and sends everything that we're going to be basically needing for that to work. And if you don't want to use the course package in here, you can go ahead and do that manually using a small middleware here in express or any other language or framework you're using, you pretty much have the ability to do that. It's better to have it in a framework or in a middleware because you want to apply this to all the API requests and also make sure to run this or register this middleware or register the course before you actually register your API, which I'm doing right here I'm using the API and everything. So make sure to register it before that in order for this middleware to run before every single other function handler. So you can do this simply in here by just like allowing the access control, allow credentials, access control, uh, allow origin in here for a particular origin. And by the way, the credentials are for like HTTP only cookies and everything that is related to, you know, cookies uh, being sent to the actual server. Uh, also, you can get like the access control allow headers, you can specify specific uh, methods or headers in here, sorry, those are methods. And there's also the headers in here, you can specify a set of headers that is accepted, or you can, you know, allow this by just putting a star in here, and everything's going to be allowed and accepted. And of course, just call the next in here, and you are basically good to go. And for example, if you're trying to actually work with a fake API, those fake APIs you find on Google and trying to like, you know, give you fake products or fake users and everything, those fake APIs themselves, the server behind that fake API, for example, this fake store API.com is actually going to return actual hitters that allow courses. So anyway, guys, thank you guys for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed this really course and hope you actually going to be, you know, loving and enjoying course from now on after watching this video, after understanding how work course works and what is course. But without further ado, guys, catch you hopefully in the next ones.